Well, right before that, there was a picture posted by oh, the royal yeah. family that was clearly AI. The fingers were messed up and everything. And so um, uh, people start reporting on this, and then it gets taken down because the news outlet said this is an AI photo. So the royal family releases an AI picture, and then they release a video of her on the bench talking. Now, interesting thing about that video is she's wearing the same shirt in that video she wore years ago at a at a photo shoot in that exact same garden. Oh, that's um, creepy. He when he would see certain people, their features would change on his face, on uh -huh. their face. Yeah. And he wouldn't see them as human, but they looked more like this. Oh, you see that? Hey. Like I, I'm eyes. thinking I'm thinking the one on the right is the one you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> yeah, the eyes are stretched and you know there's like the like this creepy smile anyway, right um, and pointy ears. And um they said, turns out there's a number of people that may be getting this disease soon. Their eternal increase of you will have children. You will literally create spirit children in a biological way. And then there is you will be with the person you love on a planet that I've designed that is perfect and happy and forever. And so, so if God says, yeah, you know what? Um, Charlie and Ryan are going to be together forever on this planet here. People, some people would lose their minds, leave the church and they would lose and they would storm out. And he would be like, you're walking away, but you know what I had prepared for you? I had a eternal glory pre prepared for you. Um, but yeah. So, so I think, I think it's important for people to gain that testimony um, obviously there are crazy things happening in Utah, obviously, you know, members of the church who have a lot of power do crazy stuff every year. It always gets in the news. And I think we need to be prepared for the institution for more skeletons to come out of the closet from the institution, but be okay because our faith lies in the restored gospel. It lies in the Lord. Who is Jabulon? Oh, it's, 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 it's Yah and Baal and El Elyon put together. It's a fake God. Of 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 the second temple period Judaism with a Renaissance twist and you're you're why are you praying to Jabulon? Well, that's what, what the owl is in the Bohemian Grove. Is it, what they do is they take Baal Baal and they repurpose that the god in different ways. Right. We were the Bruce R. McConkie, Joseph Fielding Smith members of the church, and this is and this is where people get mad at me at Ward Radio. I've been saying this and. I know I will be vindicated in 20 years, and they will say, Quaku, you were right about this, okay? I know for if I know that's gonna happen, but I know everyone's gonna hate me every time I bring it up, but I keep saying it because I really feel like it's true. I wonder who hurt you. I wonder who made you so, so mad. Tell me, where did you learn to? All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, I've been waiting. Do you know who uh, Phil Collins is? It's from the 80s. I'm 53, Kwaku. How old oh, are you? No, he, he did the Tarzan soundtrack. Yeah, but that's... I was like in my 30s when that came out. No, I was thinking I was 27. Every, everyone um, knows Phil Collins. Phil Collins is... That's like Elvis or, or you know, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Trans everyone knows... Yeah. He did Brother Bear too, right? Uh, all, the, all the good late 90s Disney movies, Phil Collins did the soundtrack for, so... Yes, and he was kind of iconic in the 80s on MTV when MTV first came out, like in, I think it was like 80, 82, 83. Uh, you had Casey Kasem was a DJ back in the 80s, and he had what was called American Top 40. Well, about 20 to 30 of those videos would be on MTV, and they would just replay over and over again. Phil Collins was in a group called Genesis. And Phil Collins was amazing. He was a drummer, a singer, uh, everything, a, a songwriter. But yes, you remember Tarzan and you remember like the 90s, which he was pretty famous in too, but also the 80s. So what reminded me of that was um, his song, I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. And I've, I've been waiting to have you on again for a long Most time. Yeah. So that song goes to my head and you asked me before I came on, we don't have anything to talk about, which that's fine. Um, let's just start with this. You're busy. Uh, are you, you're not in college anymore, are you? 
No, I have, uh, well, sort of, I, I decided I was taking less and less and less classes each semester and it was ending up just being a waste of money. Um, so I committed fully to my business, but now I'm really wanting to go back and finish my degree. So I took, a, I took time off, but I don't want to finish up at, uh, at BYU. So I've got, you know, I, it's just to Utah County is cold and wet and gray for half of the year and it's just not great. So I'm looking to go somewhere sunnier and happier. Um, and I, I believe that the weather of Utah is the re it causes the majority of the problems in our state. Oh yeah. It's well, you're so sad. It's interesting because you, you are an anomaly when it comes to the Latter-day Saint. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the, not just as a podcaster and an influencer, but, people know who you are. Why? I wasn't going to get into this yet, but why do you think that is like, what makes you so unique? I mean, you know, I started off doing the church content on uh three Mormons, which turned into saints unscripted. Um, and then I did my own channel for a bit, but then I took those videos down. Um, and I, then I did a project I did two projects with fair. One was called stone 16 yeah. and the other was called, this is the show. Um, and then, and then I've been um, on board radio. So I've been, I've done different projects, but I, um, you know, I think some, oftentimes people like to hear what I have to say just because I, I just kind of say whatever I think I don't really, um, you know, uh, uh, cater to a specific audience. Yeah. Uh, you know, so um yeah, I, I do I think people just like to hear it because sometimes I say things that are, you know, uh make the the Heartlander conservative types upset and then sometimes <laughs> they think they make them really happy. You know, sometimes I say things that make um even ex Mormons happy. You know, I just kind of give my opinion and I'm of the belief that you've gotta just seek truth above all else. Right. And even if that sometimes puts you at odds with certain people and certain topics in your own tribe, that's a good thing because then it means you're thinking, right? You're not absolutely just going along. And right. we have we do have a bit of a a follow the leader mindset in our church. Um I think that's going away. Um and well, when you say follow the leader, you don't are you talking about follow the prophet? Well, what I'm uh, mostly mean is uh oh crud, one minute. I've got a No, I'm, you're good. I'm, that that's kind of your trademark there looking at your cell phone. I noticed that on Ward Radio, it would catch you once in a while. You'd be like, I know, I oh, get sorry. It's the worst time. No, so um, doing business while you're doing a podcast. I know. It's all right. So, you're good, man. Relax. You're cool. I kind of no, want no, you yeah. to know anyway, go ahead. I'll no, well, off. um well, I don't so when you say I say follow the leader, it's more so um uh they've done these studies based on generations and what generation what 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 generations value most sociologically in their community and you find that um uh, baby boomers and up really um really value loyalty like very very much um whereas millennials don't value loyalty as much as they value authenticity right so they've been able to find these traits that uh, different generations hyper focus on and it looks like gen z values um uh, values truth almost to a fault yeah where um um sometimes you know generation z can be almost without empathy you know so they, they've done these studies and i think when you look at the way the church oftentimes wants loyalty out of its members i think it comes from the pre 1950s generation right where loyalty is a very very important thing well it's and still with the gen xers though i mean we were still the 80s emulated the 50s if you go back to the 80s we were watching movies like back to the future i remember going and watching that in the theater right, when right. it came out so your today's night well the 80s is no longer the 35 30 year back now we're looking at the nineties, right? And even the early two thousands as being antiquity, but the eighties right, right. emulated the fifties. So we were still in that mindset. That's all I wanted to say. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, a so as far I, as being loyal to something. Right. Right. 
And so, so what we're seeing right now in, in, in uh, church media, we're seeing this really interesting intersection. You've got, um, you've got guys like, like, um, like, you know, Greg Matson mm -hmm. from Quick, right? Right, right, right. But then you'll have some TikToker who is like Pierce Smith or something. One of these TikTokers, maybe Pierce Smith is not a good example, but you know, who is 21 and they both go to the same church and have a testament of the restored gospel. But this person will say, I really liked um, this person's talk. I don't really like what Elder Blank said here at conference. I think it was kind of off. But but and that, that sentence would not never been uttered by some of like, you know, Greg Matson's uh, you know, uh, uh, a circle. Yeah. Um, and so what you're finding is that we're seeing that discrepancy and there's a little bit of uncomfortability. But I, I think it's le legitimately just generational differences. Right. When. Um, because these guys weren't raised with the loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. You know, they were raised with, I mean, how long has Julie Hanks been popular? A decade? You know, um, you know, how long has John DeLynn been popular? A decade? Right. You know, um, and I'm not saying Julie Hanks and John DeLynn are one of the same, but I'm saying be, you have critical voices in the church and critical voices outside of the church that have now are such a mainstream part of church media. The, 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 the loyalty to you know, church authorities, church correlation, and anything coming from, you know, the church TM is like, not seen as 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 important. Um, and it, it's, so it's a generational thing. And so you 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 know, I, I kind of realize that and I think now is the best time to just say whatever you want. Because, you know what? Well, I think it's because of transparency. We didn't have enough of that when I was younger. We had we were loyal to for instance, being on my mission, we had missionaries that would pull out Bruce R. McConkie's Mormon doctrine. And that was doctrine. We thought that was doctrine. But then later when the internet started coming, you know, when YouTube took off and you had truther podcasters and then with truther podcasters, you had anti Mormons taking off in 2017, not just John DeLynn. I'm talking post John DeLynn or mid John DeLynn. You had, uh, you know, the, the CES letter and things like that. I think it's because your younger generation was, was getting transparency from uh, the internet and from YouTube and from all the other social media outlets. And then we had faith crisis, right? right. We, we had, that started coming to fruition. So I came from a generation that thought that things that were not doctrinal, but were opinions of, of prophets and apostles and uh, things that did that, that there was no stance on, we thought were doctrine. I taught on my mission that the Urim and Thummim was used to translate the Book of Mormon. We never talked about seer stones. That was foreign. So I think that's, that could be it too, is that you guys are used to everything's just out of the closet now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And we didn't have that. That was kind of the dark ages for me. Well, which is a good thing, in my opinion, you know, um, uh, we're just, I mean, we're witnessing such a, uh, everything's kind of the whole foundation of, of classic American Western society is shaking right now. Cause we're in, we're going through a whole reformation. We're, where everything is changing. I mean, we're going into the AI digital age, right? Right, um, right. We're going into the age where if, like Troy, if someone wants to completely ruin you, they can make an <laughs> AI I version, think they already you know, are, brother. No. You know, <laughs> and they can make you say something you never said, Um, which is terrifying to anybody who's been on the camera talking long enough, right? You can be, you know, um, but then also what you can, also though, um, because that's happening, you can now deny anything crazy you may have previously said. That's true. You know? I could so say that's a deep it. fake. That is definitely a deep fake. That is yeah. not me. I mean, have you, have you, did you keep up with the whole Kate Middleton stuff with the royal family? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, I mean, well, tell me what, what's the conspiracy theory going on with that? Well, this isn't a conspiracy theory. I mean, it okay. was. Well, I know she had can she has cancer, right? So she's been missing from the public eye for weeks. Right. And, um, then they the royal you're not saying that's where she's talking where she's sitting on that bench well right before that there was a picture posted by oh, the royal no. family that was clearly ai the fingers were messed up and everything and so um uh people start reporting on this and then 
it gets taken down because the news outlet said this is an AI photo. So the royal family releases an AI picture, and then they release a video of her on the bench talking. Now, interesting thing about that video is she's wearing the same shirt in that video she wore years ago at a at a photo shoot in that exact same garden. Oh, that's um, creepy. And uh, if you zoom in on her eyes a little bit in the video, they seem to go in and out of her face, kind of bizarre. Like, like it's a very good AI, but there's enough small things about it where you're kind of weirded out. And you're like, I'm Dude, not sure don't, if I'm don't, you came here to big. scare me. You go away quick. <laughs> no, I'm just saying we are living in an era in which we don't know what's true. And so we have to, we must go by, you know, our intuition and the yeah. Holy Spirit. And what's, what's happening, I think, with the church with uh, is, is people are being trained right now by God to not follow the leader and, and to listen to the Holy Spirit. On purpose, right? On purpose. President yeah. Nelson has constantly said, we are not going to make it if we do not have basically the constant companionship of the Holy Ghost. And if we do not learn how to uh, learn how to have personal revelation, right? Right, right, right. Right. I'm paraphrasing. But did you just real quick, did you know when he was in the Polynesian Islands, what was that three or four years ago? Was it four years ago when he did that tour in uh, when he was in um, Hawaii and Tonga and Samoa? Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah. Pre he specifically said, because I did a reaction video on this. He specifically said, uh, be prepared for the deception you will see in the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, Isn't that crazy? Well, and, and, and I think it's it's getting weirder, you know, um, <laughs> there's a lot of things coming and I feel like everyone knows something big is coming. Like I, I, and I, I, I've never been one of those, um, you know, YouTube doomsday guys who is always trying to sit, you know, if you look at the, the Gematria, April 15th means that, you know, Jupiter is colliding with, I've never been one of those people, but there's enough weird stuff happening right now where we all obviously kind of feel this. Right. Big. And, and and what's in lay what's in the future that's going to make um all those little statements the truthers made in the past that's going to make them look like cavemen what they said before well i mean we're on the brink of world war three um you know we have um i mean it's like the book of revelation is opening before our eyes yeah um and then you have this have you have you looked into this new disease that they're they're saying uh um, I'm going to say the name of it. So, you know, when I reference it, the audience can look it up. So they don't think I'm just, you know, <laughs> spouting off Alex Jones. Um, <laughs> hey, Alex Jones is right about a lot of things. Do you, okay, did so you know called, the Salt Lake Tribune has called me a conspiracy theorist, by the way? Yeah, it's okay. They're, and I'm not. You know, I believe in true conspiracies, not fake conspiracies. Well, here, I, I don't even think the term conspiracy theorist is bad anymore because half the country is. And all it really means is you di you you have an opinion different than the government, which is like, OK, then most people are conspiracy. Like, do you really right. think the government's behind 100? You know what I mean? Right, like, right. Uh, there's a disease they've just announced, um, and it is called <clears throat> prospometamorph prospometamorphopsia, prospometamorphopsia. Um, there was a guy who reported seeing, and I'll actually hold up the screen here, seeing people. Okay. Um, they, they made a, a, a digital rendering of this. He, when he would see certain people, their features would change on his face, on uh -huh. their face. Yeah. And he wouldn't see them as human, but they looked more like this. Oh, okay. like I, I'm eyes. thinking, I'm thinking the one on the right is the one you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> yeah. The eyes are stretched and you know, there's like the, like this creepy smile anyway. Right. Um, and pointy ears. And, um, they said, turns out there's a number of people that may be getting this disease soon. And this disease, um, makes people kind of look like demons. So, 
you know, if you start seeing things, people that, who may look like demons with these bizarre features and strange oh, eyes and no. ears, well, it means you have this disease. Now, one, the conspiracy person immediately goes, okay, so something's happening where we're about to start seeing demons and the media is trying to cover it up. Or two, the media ne- is having a bad click week and so they needed to turn a story about you know uh, uh diseases that 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 change your vision and make things seem off and they needed to spin it in a way that freaks everybody out right so right to, either way it's bizarre right something I mean, psyops or some like a, a yeah yeah so so i mean that's sort of like the world we're, we're dealing with where uh, bizarre things are happening and in really strange ways so we have to figure out is it purposefully being put out in a way that will receive it as bizarre or is it actually <clears throat> bizarre they're trying to hide it um it's like that plane lady right that that mother effer back there is not real remember that um yeah. you have, and did you see watching. the meme where scooby-doo is sitting down <laughs> yeah yeah they have all like like the Loch Ness monster and bigfoot and stuff yeah but everyone's trying to figure out what on earth she saw um, and then you've got people who, you know, since then, TikToks have been going around where there's a million views where someone's like, I didn't know how to share this story, but now people are sharing the story. I was in a park in, in, in Cedar Rapids, and this guy was following me, and I turned around, and his eyes were jet black, and I knew this guy wasn't human. Anyway, there's all these, you know, so so that whole world of conspiracy is getting bigger. Well, where well yeah, you've got the conspiracy theorists have been talking about lizard people or you know, the like, uh, the reptilians. You've heard yeah, of that before, yeah. right? Oh, so yeah. Oh, I would, yeah, the, yeah. Well, when you showed me that picture, that's the first thing that came to my mind was the reptilian people. Um, and maybe, maybe it's a real, maybe it's a real disease. It's calling causing some kind of muscular uh, tweaking of your the muscles in your face, or who knows? I um, I find the reptilian conspiracy fascinating. I think it's fascinating because it's the best conspiracy. Where where QAnon failed was QAnon failed the same reason why like movie series fail you know y- you have to keep doing some more wild things you know and so it's like the fast and the furious you know it's a movie and they're, they're zooming cars down LA and they're fighting bad guys and then like I don't, and then a couple movies later they're like flying on the moon or something and you're like what right. is going on you know or Indiana Jones great example fighting fighting uh the Germans finding the artifacts and then suddenly there's a bunch of aliens sitting around in a cave with a crystal skull and Kate Blanchett. And you're like, <laughs> and then the last one, they're going back in time. Then they get into a Nazi plane and fly back in time to the ancient world. It's like, what is happening? Same thing. Happened, that's the problem with QAnon. All these awesome things. And suddenly Donald Trump is a time traveler going back to steal the te- the, the Nikola Tesla papers right. to save the world. Like you, you went too far with it, you know, you went too far with it. Yeah. But lizard people is one of the best conspiracies legitimately because it has everything you need. And it's such a, it's such an outlandish idea. It's, it's, it's very original, right? Someone says, oh, I think the world's run by evil bankers. Heard it before. I think the world is run by, um, is, is run by mega corporations i think the world is run by blackmailers i think the world is run by half human half lizards you go (laughs) whoa buddy Lee stacks it's lee stacks from land of the lost that kind of goes back to predictive programming you know are you are you privy on that stuff the simpsons and um well well, i read donald trump being president right down to a down to a oh yeah and even 9-11 were Uh, yeah, but there was a show when I was a kid called land of the lost and there were these creatures that lived in caves and they looked like reptilian people and they were called slee stacks. And these, this family basically goes on a, uh, a river trip and they get lost and then they end up in a prehistoric land where these lizard people were. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's interesting. I, you're 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 making fun of things and you and we're having fun and we're laughing and you're and you're bringing some scary stuff which is very interesting about kate middleton but the point you're making you are making a point and the point is is that we 
we have to have the Holy Ghost or we're going to um, it used to be you're not going to you're not going to know what's true without the Holy Ghost. But now you can even uh, you could be on the, the the verge of insanity without the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 I mean, that's that's by design. I mean, this world is we live in a fallen world, you know, and and I think I have opinions on that, on, on the nature of how how our world has fallen that I don't know if LDS YouTube's ready for yet, but um, we live in a fallen world and Satan has control over the, you know, armies and navies, you know, and, and he's, he's in control of all that stuff. And he reigns with blood and horror upon the earth. So we often try to try, try to use that system to help us, but we can't because that system is controlled by the evil one. Right. Um, so now we have to get, people are, are getting more intuition where they're recognizing, okay, um, the systems are, are lies. The governments are lies, are, are full of liars. The border isn't real. Like all of these man-made systems we've, we've been raised to believe are, are, are strong and true. We're going, it's it kind of just tumbling down in front of us. And, and so this is actually one of the reasons why I, I recently went on a show with, uh, with uh, uh, Nuance Kara. Um, I know. I reacted no, no, no. to it. No, I, I had a lot. I, I, I haven't see. Had, I didn't watch. The, the I reaction. said that you should have bore your testimony. That's what I said. I said he didn't bear his testimony. Oh, I think yeah. we're getting away from that. I think that people are trying too hard. I've I've been putting out videos where it's me against the intellectuals. Maybe because I'm, I feel like I'm not accepted in the intellectual circles. And then I look at my wife and I go, "Am I dumb? I'm." Am I a low cow a pod, LDS podcaster? <laughs> Am I a low cow? You know what a low cow is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I a low cow LDS podcaster? Come on, quick, who tell me the truth? No, no. Well, well, you have one of them. I mean, you're, you're, you're getting. Am up I there. cringe? Am I cringe, no. brother? Okay, thank you. No, no. Um, but um, you know, so, but we we talked we yeah we talked a lot, and I actually I was trying to make the case to her that um. You know, she was raised with a specific flavor of the LDS church. And to her, Mormonism in general is confined to the flavor of the LDS church she grew up in. Now, sociologically speaking, it's that you can't you can't view a philosophy or movement that way, right? You can't view all of Protestantism through the lens of right this church. You can't. She couldn't, and at least in the interview, couldn't separate the two things. And I well, and like, when people leave the church, they get stuck back, almost like a drug addict that doesn't sober up till later, and they're stuck back when they started using drugs. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but the ex Mormons they tend to be stuck back in the time that when they left the church, so they haven't been keeping up with the ongoing restoration. Does that make sense? Go ahead. Right. Well, yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, you had on the comments, you had like Dan Vogel <laughs> commenting. He goes on all, he goes everywhere. Like, Dan, dude, I'm sorry. You had your heyday 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> and the church you left is no longer even the church that's here. That's now. what I mean. That's it's exactly like, what I mean. Yeah, and they they come and they're they're like, well, back in my, it, it, I don't care. <laughs> like about back in yeah. your day. Like <laughs> you got to get over it. It's like you're polishing the trophy. You know, the the guy who was the high school quarterback who didn't make it into college. <laughs> <laughs> and just hangs out in the old town and polishes his trophy over and over. Right, there. right, right. You know, so um, uh, it's it, it's sort of like that. So I was making the case that hey, you need to separate Mormonism from the LDS Church, and you need to separate the Book of Mormon from Joseph Smith. And the comments were going wild, like, "How do? You, what do you mean separate the Book of Mormon? That's ridiculous." And I'm like, "No, if the Book of Mormon is true, it means Joseph didn't write it, which means it has to be separated from him right. because it's a book." Right. Um, and 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 so these were concepts that they couldn't. I, I think Kara kind of grasped it, but didn't. At least, well, what you're saying it it wasn't his book. It wasn't his right, book. Right. So and, and he quoted they, mainly from the Bible, which goes to right. show you why would you create this masterpiece called the Book of Mormon and then never quote from it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah he barely used it, right? And so, um, and and that's what's interesting. The Book of Mormon isn't Joseph Smith's book. No. And if something, let's say tomorrow, 
something happens where we find out a bunch of the apostles are evil. Okay. Let's just say some news breaks. It's undeniable. It's not. A Their faces face. started to grim. They yeah, started okay. getting these evil yeah, grimaces. They, yeah. They turned into like the, 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 the demons. Okay. Right. A bunch of people would lose faith in the restored gospel in the book of Mormon. But I wouldn't because I recognize the layers, right? The layers first, the restored gospel of Jesus Christ or Mormonism refers to Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It refers to the Church of Jesus Christ Bicker tonight. It refers to um, the community of Christ. Um, uh, the, 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 the AUB guys who are a little bit weird, <laughs> um, the FLDS who are a lot of bit weird, uh, the snuffer rights, the doctrine of Christ, all of the, and then, and then a bunch the, of the, the guys, splinter, all the, the splinter yeah. groups. Yeah. Everyone who claims the book of Mormon, it's a Mormon. And that's one of the reasons why president Nelson said, we don't want to be called Mormons anymore because there's no differentiation. Right. So that would mean that Mormonism exists outside of the LDS church. Yeah. And so if your whole faith is in an institution, but not, not, you know, the bedrock of what the institution is built on, then, you know, you're going to, you're going to fall easily. Um, and you're also not going to allow yourself to, to explore um, different questions, the different avenues from a restored gospel perspective, you know? So, um, you know, like, 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 Mormon doctrine, Bruce R. McConkie, right? If if the church hadn't disavowed that, then we would be even more stuck in the way we're viewing the expansiveness of reality because it, it's now it's all going, no, this is being filtered through, right through Bruce R. McConkie's mind. You know, Bruce R. McConkie's done the thinking for you. <laughs> and 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 that's going away in church culture. That's That's becoming less and less of the case. And I think it's a good thing. I think some people really want a heavy handed authoritarian style leadership that tells you exactly what to think, who to talk to, who not to talk to. And, you know, you see some of that sentiment. We need the leaders to be tougher and meaner and to go after, you know, publicly call out these, these critics, but you don't want that because, you know, um, if your only tool is a hammer, then every problem looks like a nail. Well, and, and that, and that just brings pushback on us from, uh, the powers that be in other entities and institutions, right? And individuals. But what you're saying is an individual relationship with our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and a testimony is what's going to be the strongest, uh, what, what's going to be stronger than anything. Well, where do we get the Book of Mormon from? I mean, if Moroni hadn't preserved it, you know, where where would that 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 physical book that allowed the witnesses to gain a testimony of its authenticity. Moroni had no church. No. The church was destroyed. It had fallen wicked. It was one guy with his belief in the father and the son who preserved. So, so the whole reason of the book of Mormon is actually from a guy who had no church, right? Right. Right. There was no institution. There was no 501 C three. It didn't exist. It was just Moroni. And I think that's really important. And I think that's really <laughs> there was no 501 C three. Yeah, there wasn't. You, you know? should write a book about Morona. Well, there was no 501 C three. <laughs> right. The, <laughs> but but that that's important to note because we think the institution and the general authorities are gonna carry us into the second coming. And well, we it definitely think, it definitely uh, wasn't the oath either. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. The Darren <laughs> doesn't. You know, I, I saw I actually, actually interviewed him and I never put his interview up. I'm sorry. I should have said that. You know, I he's a nice I guy. Think, I think it was good. I think he should be applauded because we do need more um, LDS cinema, and and you know the fact. That I think the, it should be repurposed, though. I think he could really salvage well, that, something. As a, as a guy who works in media, I'm always annoyed that like we have there's five five or ten new Bible movies that come out every year. And it's like, what do we have? We have the Book of Mormon videos on YouTube, which are meh. And then we yeah. have that one Testaments movie from like 2001. Right, right. So it's we like need a brave heart. We need a brave heart, like uh, production of the Book of Mormon. We need Mel Gibson to direct the Book of Mormon. Like, no, we, I mean, we could do it. The, the church could fund it. Yeah. The church could fund it. 
it could be an option. Totally. It would convert so many people, but we just want to buy up land and do real estate instead. I see. Well, that, know. that's good too, but I, I know your point. Yeah. So, yeah, Darren Salomon, I saw the movie. I, I really, I, I, I'm happy that he put it out. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it uh, Billy Zane, Billy Zane. That's <laughs> big. It? That yeah, took him I, eight years. I, I think the, I think the whole t- eight eight to ten years that it took him to raise the money probably went to Billy Zane. No, I don't know. Right. But yeah, yeah it was. If I, it, it, if I were to make it, I would do it differently. I would do it Quentin Tarantino style, and I would purposefully make it bad, because, um, oftentimes they they say sell your first, love your second, and sometimes the first movie you make needs to just be an audience grabber so they can right. trust that you get revenue and then you can make something you really like the second time. I would do a card and I've joked about doing a Quentin Tarantino style Porter Rockwell movie, you know, just really the violence is so ridiculous. Robert Rodriguez style, like a hateful really eight healthy. style, hateful like, eight. Yeah. Or, 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 um, or, um, uh, like a spaghetti Dust Western, Star. something spaghetti yeah, Western. So yeah. ridiculous. Right. And everyone would be like, did you guys see that new wacko Mormon movie where he's like, Porter Rockwell, like, like we're talking, he throws the golden plates at someone and it decapitates them. Like, just yeah, really- and the cinematography is like from the seventies, where it kind of zooms in on him. You know, make he's- it so bad on purpose so everybody watches it and it makes a ton of money. That's yeah. what I would do. Oh, definitely, but, that would work. Yeah, um, but yeah. So, so I think I think it's important for people to gain that testimony. Um, obviously, there are crazy things happening in Utah. Obviously, you know, members of the church who have a lot of power do crazy stuff every year. It always gets in the news. And I think we need to be prepared for the institution, for more skeletons to come out of the closet from the institution, but be okay because our faith lies in the restored gospel. It lies in the Lord. Um, right. And 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 we also need to be okay with recognizing that um, both the LDS churches um, – take on church history and the ex Mormon take on church history, both of those might be kind of wrong sometimes. And, and we need to be open to looking at new, all the new things, you know, they say if your opinion never changes, then you don't really believe it. You know, they say, because, you know, and so like, I don't trust politicians that are like, I've been saying the same thing for 50 years. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. Oh, yeah. I don't want to. You know? Well, so what's your idea of an ongoing restoration? Are are we learning that the fundamental principles that really matter are faith, repentance, baptism, the ordinances, right? So, but even the ordinances have changed. So then people get this cognitive dissonance. So I'm upset. You talk about progmos and desnats. I actually learned that term from you and Cardin and right, and right. and uh, uh, Brad. But those are stereotypical. We we know that, right? They're very stereotyped. I notice that the church will capitulate or they will they will appease the woke members of the church or or those who are in that maybe that's that spectrum, right? But they right, don't right. care about those who are ha- having cognitive dissonance from the uh like the Gen Xers that are the Desnat crowd, maybe like we have to do a 180, you know, right, right. We were the Bruce R. McConkie, Joseph Fielding Smith members of the church. And this is, and this is where people get mad at me at Ward radio. I've been saying this and I know I will be vindicated in 20 years and they will say, Kwaku, you were right about this. Okay. I know for, if I know that's going to happen, but I know everyone's going to hate me every time I bring it up, but I keep saying it because I really feel like it's true. Um, We've got to separate our feelings and our adherence to folk heroes from the gospel. So, um, you know, uh, you ever see those memes where it's, it says like, I, I kneel for the, fl- I, I, st- I stand for the flag and I kneel at the cross. You know, yeah. you've seen those, that kind of sentiment. Yeah. Um, that. White Christian nationalism? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> well, well, not even that. I wouldn't even say Christian nationalism. But, you know, what you see is it, it used to be the is, the 1950s on, really post-war, World War II, 
patriotism and and Christianity were hand in hand. Right. Right. I mean, a, Christian services would all like in the South. They're always like, "Let we're going to honor our soldiers. We have a big American flag up there next to the, like that." Was a big thing, and it is still a big thing, but it's not going to last. Um, the Lord says He'll make an end of all empires and all nations. Right. Um, John the Revelator, he sees mystery Babylon, and Babylon was the richest, toughest, most powerful empire, and then Rome gets called Babylon. Egypt gets called Babylon because the tough giant empires are always called Babylon. Who's Babylon today? It's not Panama. Right. <laughs> you know I mean? It's us. Yeah. Right. And so, well, um, could it be the United Nations too? You know, some people think it's a little bit bigger than just the United States. That it's, oh, no, I, I, I mean, it's the great, you know, the, the great whore upon many waters, right? That, right. That, that John the Revelator saw. And, and, you know, who is that? Is it the UN? Is it the United States? It, it, it's it's you know the hand that controls all right the puppeteering hand but we have to get away from that um we have to separate this love of material and this love of tradition from what's eternal you know and and people have a really hard time with that and that's the big problem that the desnats have is is you know they still want to live in the America of John Wayne, you know, it's that, that style, but it's dead. It doesn't exist. And so when they see, well, I would say, okay, let me, let me play like a little devil's advocate there just real quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, the debt when we, I think that we have to stop generalizing too, though. There isn't just one type of Desnat and there's not just one type of Progmo, right? Would you agree with that? I think that um, there's probably most, one type of Desnat, but there's a couple different kinds of problems. Well, I'm a Gen X or Desnat. I'm not a, I'm not a boomer. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I, uh, I think a lot of Desnat, I'm not a Desnat. Let me, let me rephrase that. I'm somebody that believes in, uh, that in agency. And I think a lot of those on the, on the right want that to be preserved. Or, or am I wrong? Do you think that both sides believe well, that? To be fair, when, when I say Desnat, that's a very small function of those on the right. It's it's those that don't want agency. They want authoritarianism. And, and then you have people who are kind of adjacent to that where, you know, they the, – the, that McConkie era Mormonism, when you walk into the house and the Constitution is framed next to the picture of the – next right. to the picture of the – Right. Yes. That era is dying out. That that flavor is is it's basically gone. Right. And people are upset about that because then that's restored gospel. But it's not. That's 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 one school of thought within it. But you have to ask, is my allegiance to the Lord based on these folk traditions or is it based on that? Real but when connection? you say folk traditions, are you calling those who believe in uh, the new Jerusalem being in America or America being a promised land, a land of promise um, or J. Reuben Clark talking about the constitution being next to the scriptures are those echo chamber type, is that echo ta chamber type language from the past that uh, that that is taking on a, a different meaning now? Um, yeah. Oh, well, so so in, in regard to the New Jerusalem being built in you know in Missouri, um, you know, I, I think that's a little bit separate because that's that's more of a prophecy of a gathering. But okay. the Constitution being next to the scriptures, I. Do you know how many empires really thought they were favored? <laughs> you know. Yes, but does well, isn't there somewhere in the Doctrine and Covenants that talks about the constitution? I mean, didn't Joseph Smith talk about the constitution? Yeah, the, the, the freedom being inspired, right? outlined, or okay. inspired, by, right? Um, but then you have to ask, how, look at how we actually rebelled against that inspiration, right? Um, right. We, very well to this day, you know, if if you know there there is a. A revelation given to Wilford Woodruff called the Sunset Arizona Revelation that used to be part of the scriptures and is really no longer, where the Lord tells him America's cursed and evil, and I'm going to destroy it. Yes. <laughs> okay? So any any kind of you know prophetic you know um, um, thumbs up 
from the Lord about America was already well, like Orson it. Pratt. I mean, Orson Pratt was was censored by uh, Brigham Young for being speaking heretically at the pulpit, <laughs> you know. Right, right. And when I was on my mission, we we loved uh, Journal of Discourses and The Seer. But then later I, lo- I, I read, I think I learned from Fair Latter-day Saint that, um, that, that Brigham Young and Orson Pratt didn't even see eye to eye half the time on, on what no, they thought was doctrinal. No, yeah. no, not at all. Orson, yeah. Orson Pratt and Brigham Young constantly fought. Um, right. Um, yeah, so, so it, 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 it's interesting there. But, but again, th- th- we have to ask where is our, like, like tomorrow, like at the second coming, Okay, if the Lord says something like, "Look, I want you all to be in heaven," and let's say this is this is a conference. Okay, the Lord is giving a conference to all the saints, and He says, "I want you to go into your house. I want you to uh, rip out three chapters from the Bible and crumple them because they're fake. I want you to take down every American flag and Canadian flag and Australian flag, wherever your country is. I want you to take it and throw it in the trash." Okay. Um, I want you to uh, take the frame constitution and bash it on the ground. None of that matters to me. Those are all man-made systems of Babylon. I want no, you need to have no allegiance to them and only to me and my father. You know, people would be like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't well, know if Jesus was Marxist. Like I, I legit people would, I would think you need to have more faith in the older generation. I mean, I think I think maybe you might be a little disconnected there. Well, not even just older. I mean, I'm from Texas. <laughs> there, there are people like I grew up with who my age. Well, okay, up, yeah, right. Yeah. It, I no, so- I think that they okay, I think that most of them believe like you like you said that the principles, the 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 meaning behind the constitution is what matters, not not the actual document itself. I and would I think say some people though, well, I, well also though because you're a thinker though, Troy, like you a lot of people aren't thinkers. Like you've had Ben McClintock on your show, who is right. a wild character, right? Many people would be like, don't even talk to Ben McClintock. Persona right. non grata. I have you Joel Skousen like, once a month on my right. program. Right. I do. I, the Holy Ghost guides me. I love the and Holy it, Ghost. And he guides you. I know that. I, you when I listen to you, I could tell that you have the Holy Ghost, brother. Okay. I could tell. I know that. And so, you know, I think... We we put things next to the throne of God that should not be there. And those come from our traditions. And every culture has them and every country has them. And it's why the Lord says, I'm going to make a full end of all the nations. You know, when 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 Satan brings Jesus to the cliff and he says, I can give you all the governments if you bow down and worship me. Well, why does Satan have the authority to give those t- to Jesus? Well, because they're his, you know. Right, um, right. Who, the, who founded the first city? Biblically speaking, it was Cain. The first government organized is Cain, you know, under the influence of the adversary. He is in control of all this. And that's why the symbology, you go, you go to Washington, D.C., there's not one Christian symbol there. It's all pagan. Egyptian obelisks and 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 the the, the mural on top of the Capitol. It's you got all the Greek and pagan and Roman gods. It's like it's all fallen angel imagery, right? I right. mean, that is though you know that, yes that's totally problem. and people yeah. are when people start to recognize that they're going to be freaked out because they're going to say wait i was like totally misled i was raised in vernal utah and i was taught you know the book of mormon god jesus and the constitution and it's like well, no like, well you I look at like, the dollar bill communist. the other guys yeah. are just that you know i mean the dollar bill has the owl on it it has the all-seeing eye it has uh freemasonry not to say that all Masons are, you know, Mason, Mason, Masonry is just an institution, but it has been used, especially in Hollywood, the Scottish Rite of Freemason. I know you go, you delved into that yourself. Okay. When you did your thing about Madame Blavatsky and Alice Bailey, I, I don't know. I sent you a text one time. I'm like, dude, I, I know everything you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the early, uh, um, late, late 19th century early 20th century, all of those new age authors, I think are very interesting people to read. It's a total world of, 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 of information. Some are good, some are bad, but the information is still worth reading. But I mean, I used to think Freemasonry was weird and then I thought it actually wasn't weird. And I thought it was just, you know, uh, just more information like the temple. And now I think it's weird again. 
um, because I, I really started to dive into it. But Do you it, think it, it's the invert that Lucifer uses as his temple? You think it's an inverse of what we do in our temple? Like signs oh. and tokens, covenants that he makes with Hollywood elite or big bankers, um, the, the whore of Babylon. I, I do. I think it's definitely um, Luciferian. Um, yeah. I know. I know. I all sound like a conspiracy theorist, but you know, um, when you when you do a mock sacrifice of 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 a guy with it, where you're killing him with a hammer, and you get to bring his body upstairs, and it, it's like, what are you doing? You're you're you're, you're what? Yeah, and but that it, could be hyperbole too. I mean, you know that that yeah, doesn't but necessarily. All the people that do mock sacrifices are. Um, like that's what Bohemian Grove was. Oh no, it's just it's just it's just an effigy. We promise we're not running around naked having sex with each other on top of an owl. Like, <laughs> what are you people doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, no, yeah, <laughs> you're stop it, stop it. <laughs> like, we know those people are freaks. Okay, right, right. And they're always like, well, look, I know our thing seems really creepy and weird that we're pretending to kill a guy, and then you get to the highest, and we worship Venus, Columba, and Jabulon. You're like, who is Jabulon? Oh, it's 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 Yah and Baal and El Elyon put together. It's a fake god of 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 the Second Temple period Judaism with a Renaissance twist. And you're you're why are you praying to Jabulon? Well, that's what, what the owl is in the Bohemian Grove. Is it, what they do is they take Baal, Baal, and they repurpose that the god in different ways, uh, just like Catholicism. You know, Mary, the Virgin Mother. And the Lord are very important symbols, and we do yes. need a better Mariology in the church, I think. But a lot of the way the world views the Virgin Mother and the Son is really just um, uh, Queen Semiramis and Tammuz, right? Um, Queen Semiramis, the wife of Nimrod. Yes, who that's who I was thinking. Yes, back as his own son Tammuz, right? And that that um, and Osiris, Osiris, yeah. yeah, Osiris, yeah, and, and so you. You, you start to realize, well, and who are the Freemasons praying to? It's like, oh, and then you find the traces of them pray, uh, of doing some, uh, ceremonies for Venus Columba, who is, you know, who is Semiramis. And then you find out that um, uh, Venus Columba, the word Columba is such a holy name to these people that are running around in leader hose and hitting each other with hammers that then they have – you know, Columba is it becomes this archetypal name that they put into the government, District of Columbia, Christopher Columbus, whose name wasn't even Christopher Columbus. You know, you start fr the way they're framing um, yeah. this American reality is based off of these Freemasonic, bizarre, you know, fallen gods they're worshiping. And then you and then you get it gets even creepier. Go look at the Statue of Liberty. Glenn Beck is wrong. It isn't Moses. Go look at the designer who he wanted it to be. It's straight up it, Queen Semiramis. Yeah. And, and, and then it's like, well, who is the whore who sits upon many waters? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder who it could be. You know, it, it's just the whole thing. And so, but, but, but that's what I'm saying. We talk about the restoration of all things. All this new info is going to be coming to us. And some people are going to be freaked out. But you've got to keep your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And, but that doesn't mean the Book of Mormon didn't take place here. Uh, like I have a lot no, of yeah, geography totally did. It totally and, did. Yeah. and this was a land that was separated by the many waters. Right. And it's a land of freedom, but, but I know where you're going. I, I get what you're saying. I mean, it's, it doesn't mean that there aren't nuances. It doesn't mean that there aren't imperfections like the gospel still couldn't have thrived anywhere else, but here I'm, I'm talking about the restoration. Do Maybe. you agree I'm with that? Sure. I don't I mean, know. Because they was it by him. design that the headquarters of the church had to be here? Or, or... I don't know. I don't okay. know. I, I do not know. Um, you know, uh, there's a number of things we, we just don't know. I mean, we always say the church couldn't have been restored anywhere else, you know, because nowhere else had freedom. But that's not really true. And also, I mean, we had to leave America. Right. Like, right. We did kill Joseph Smith. And so we were like, oh. We should go to Mexico. <laughs> so it's like maybe they should have just started it in Mexico. You know what I mean? Um, right. Mexico got rid of a lot of the atrocities that we were still doing in our country way before we did. So, so, but I think all those points, even if the gospel, it was the only place the gospel could have been restored, 
that doesn't really matter too much because those are usually just points people use to distract you to get you to continue to worship the idol of 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 the state you know the people who who benefit from you having a positive emotional reaction and legitimately believing that this country is different and and we're the epicenter of humanity and this time we're all in God's favor and God's like no what are you talking about end of all nations it's all every knee will bow all the idols will crumble all the governments will fall that's how I'm showing you my power satan wanted control of those governments right you want you want satan to fall his his influence has to fall too. And people hate that idea because they place their allegiance in a flag and in a state next to the Lord. But that's that's what the idolatry is. That's how the Lord's gonna gonna take that down. We don't need it. We don't, you know, and 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 it's and a lot of people are waking up for this because they're like, Yeah, hey, um, why are our politicians who make these oaths and 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 talk about how America is the greatest, why are they running around naked in the woods in Bohemian Grove? <laughs> Like they're literally running around naked in the woods and having orgies with each other. Like, yeah, they're literally going to Epstein Island. What's going on here? This is weird. This is creepy. And if this is the, these are the people fighting in our behalf on the most righteous, best country ever, we've totally been deceived, you know? Well, let me ask you this. Let's, let's, uh, I, that kind of segues. Why, what, when we talk about an on, how much time do you have left? Uh, I've got maybe 20 ish minutes left. Okay. So there was a show called crossfire that I used to watch when I was young and the guy would just say one word to these uh, pundits and they would have to come back with something. Can I try that with you? Yeah, let's do it. Charlie bird. Um, <laughs> not the stuff. Oh, for some reason I thought of Charlie Hebdo. Okay. So, the, Let's talk the, about the, the, the some cartoonist. of this. I know no. Charlie. I know him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, start over. Start over. Are you okay? So Charlie Bird, what? How do you yeah. feel about some of the things that are going on with him and Deseret News? Uh, him being married. Uh, I think it's weird that Mormon stories stalked him. Yeah. Taking the sacrament and published a bunch of stuff. I think. We are going to have to receive greater light and knowledge on the subject of of, of uh, homosexuality in general, um, because some people it's just by their nature they are attracted to men if they're men, they're attracted to women if they're women, and it isn't going to change. Some people cannot do you know um, a, a mixed orientation marriage, um, you know the no matter how much you want to like fib it, the the, the self harm stats are pretty bad. And my honest opinion is, look, this is a guy who is very gay. He's never going to be attracted to a woman. He doesn't want a woman. But he has a testimony of the Book of Mormon, and he's being active in his ward. And, you know, it, to me, it's, it's, it's like, what more do you want a gay LDS person to do? You know, I mean, if you're saying I want you to stay single and well, be what, depressed, what happened? Your whole okay. life, it's like, well, at some point we do have to kind of be like, look, look. If we're mad at gay people for leaving the church, and pursuing, you know, if we're mad at gay people for being in the church, and um, not dating but wanting the church to change doctrine, and we're mad at gay people for being in relationships but staying in the church and posting their testimony, at some point we have to. It's like you can't have all three. Unless you're saying, I want you to be quiet, silent, and hate yourself. And that's not an option any person with integrity is going to put themselves through. So I do think um, we do need more revelation on that subject. On, on you know, uh, on, and on for, for example, the people in the church that believe in MMP, multiple mortal probations, they have a solution to this where they say, you may have six or seven lives. Multiple game, mortal probations. You know? <laughs> That's the same thing as saying same sex attraction or something. No, no, no. That's that's the that's the early reincarnation. Thing. Yeah, but, but I know. I'm saying it's the same. It's like it's it's a, right. oh, a right. yeah. Okay, now I see. Politically yeah. correct in the church way of saying right. But it, that, that was answer funny. Is look that solves the the, the same sex um, attraction question. Okay, because, but 
it makes it irrelevant. But we need more information on the subject because right now we put gay people in a pigeonhole where we okay. say you need to be single, miserable, and hate yourself. No. And, and you know, I mean, in a okay, way... Okay, but he, it, hear me out. Hear me out. What... I grew up with alcoholism, okay? My, it's in my DNA. I am a former... I am a recovering alcoholic. My dad had alcoholism. My mom, both sides of my family. It's a disease. It's, it's in my DNA. Um, and this is reminding me of when you were on, um, when you and Cardin went on that show. What was it called? What was it called? It was just a month ago. Oh, Jubilee. Jubilee. Okay. Yeah. And when Cardin made a statement or you made a statement and uh, the, the people that were with uh, John DeLynn got very upset. I'm almost kind of saying the same thing. I look at it like what happened to the, you said are homosexuals supposed to just stay miserable. What happened to, we need to ch make changes and that changes are sometimes hard and difficult. I have proclivities to drink just the same. And this is my opinion as a, somebody with same sex attraction has proclivities to be with another man or is sexually attracted to them. Is that something, and it could go either way, but is, could that also be something that they need to work on discipline themselves? What happened to old fashioned discipline and coming to Christ and becoming a new creature in Christ and maybe being born with weaknesses that we need to overcome? Well, um, almost like it's in my DNA to be an alcoholic. I struggle every day with that, every day with that. Well, you know, I, I would I would say the difference is. You're not an alcoholic until you take that. You know, even if it's in your DNA, but until you take that first sip and you get into that world, right? right. Even the beginning of the journey of being an alcoholic is a choice. Um, for most people who are who are gay, it's not a choice. It's just as they're developing in puberty, they're finding that their fundamental attraction is to the same gender. Um, there was no catalyst that sparked that, right? Um, and you know, to be an alcoholic also requires monetary purchase. You need to get your hands on alcohol, right? Right. To be an alcoholic. To be gay, there's nothing you need to get your hands on. It's, again, part of your fundamental attraction. Okay. Um, so I think we've tried to find ways to equate it um, with, with other things. But, I mean, in reality, all the ways we try to equate it with other things are, 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 are material, are things with a material catalyst that create a form of addiction as opposed to this is a part of their fundamental biological nature. The, and the other thing is um, there is discipline, but there's one discipline that the Lord doesn't really want. The first thing God says after he uh, creates Adam is it's not good for man to be alone, right? Companionship is, I mean, that's how bad it is where the earth is so beautiful and everything is spinning in its orbit. Um, um, and and this beautiful round or flat, depending on who you are, I'm not sure where you land on that, Troy. <laughs> but you know that whole thing. I dabbled in flat Earth, dabbled in it at one time, but I went, away, okay. I, I left it. But I still but, don't think we went to the moon. I do not yeah, believe no, we me went. Either. There's no way we took a dude. We did not go. We're not going back. there anyway. I don't want to get off. But why aren't we going there again? Anyway, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears> but but anyway, he saw that man should be alone companionship is so important and 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 so gay people in the church have this we're asking them to deny themselves companionship you know which is a which is such an important part of the human experience um and then we're also asking them to deny their fundamental attraction which had no material catalyst it's just who they are so it is a different beast and so i think well well we don't have the answers but we do know having a life without romance or sex forever is a surefire way to be extremely miserable. Okay. I, right? I, yes. So you look at a guy like Charlie Bird and it's like, well, I mean, what else could you want? 
you know, he's not doing the ex-Mormon thing. He's not even trying to um, lobby or change the church's doctrine. He's saying, look, this is what I need to do for me. I fell in love and I love the Lord and this is how I'm doing my life. And it's not conventional, but this is how I'm doing it. It's like, you know what? We haven't told, given a, a way for, for gay people to exist in the church in a way that's healthy for them. That hasn't been an option yet. And yeah. I think Charlie Bird is the best example of what to do because, you know, I mean, it, it just, you, you can't ask someone to be miserable, you know, and, 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 and. Well, I'm all for eternal roommates. <laughs> like, you know, you, you, no man should be alone. No woman should be alone. I have an aunt Kathy and she's married to a woman named Kathy, my dad's sister. She's Kathy with a C. Her wife is Kathy with a K, but, uh, I'm, I do not, I, I kind of look at, uh, eternal merit. I, I, first I want to congratulate you on even answering the question. You could have just said, I don't want to go there. Uh, right. and you did well, but I think to leave it at this, maybe, uh, unless you want to go further on it. But I, I think that I don't have, I don't see heavenly father having a problem with, people cohabitating together in eternity. But as far as the new and everlasting covenant of marriage, I do not believe that it's defined in that same fashion because of procreative powers repopulating the earth. But then who's to say that we procreate the same as gods and goddesses as we do here, or is romance more of a physiological thing that we experience here and will romance not be a thing? Maybe that's maybe we mature out of that stage too as well. So I don't know. There that that's a very complicated issue. And um but I know where I stand now. I I I believe in the proclamation to the family. I don't like that there are professors today trying to ad that are advocating for changing that. I I do not think that that is healthy. In other words, where do I know you've what you got like five minutes left? Um, we can you can answer this, but where do we draw the line in? Are we are we abandoning all fundamentalism? Period. I mean, what 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 lasts? What what is lasting, and what is not lasting? Is everything changeable? Is this ongoing restoration mean that that everything evolves? Um, well, I, I, I don't think everything's going to change, but I think we should be okay with if, if a lot does, you know, because at the end of the day, one of the, one of my favorite, uh, scriptures from DNC one, one is heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Right. And that, in, I mean, that's an entire, that, that, the, the, the fabric, our fabric of reality will not be this way in a million in a million years what makes us comfortable is holding on to that which we're um you know associated with that which we we, we we've experienced but if we really believe we're eternal being and we really believe we're going to be like god we have to be brave and be willing to put away these things we want to hold on to you can't take it with you forever. It's going to, heaven and earth will pass away. Heaven's going to be transformed into something else one day. This earth, it's not going to be here, but we still will, right? And that's the beautiful promise. It's like the Lord is like, look, there is endless eternity waiting for you. You got to give up. Like You have to be willing to get out of your comfort zones. Massively, massively. And you know what? I And, and, and I am prepared, like... No more tokens or oaths. I'm not saying it's going to happen. But what what's going to happen then? People will be like, well, what's going on? What's going on? That means it's all fake. Time to join, Time to become a nihilist. No, 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 no. You, you have to be willing to keep your faith in the Lord. He has always, always done things to confuse us on purpose, to train us for eternity. Always done that. And at, at, he can change things at will. And I'm literally to the point where um, my, you know, if if the Lord said, 
marriage, eternal marriage is defined in a couple of ways. There is eternal glory. Um, and then there's a relationship and then there's eternal increase. Let's say something like that happened where there's marriage, eternal glory, where you'll become like the father and the mother. And then there is eternal increase of you will have children. You will literally create spirit children in a biological way. And then there is, you will be with the person you love on a planet that I've designed that is perfect and happy and forever. And so, so if God says, yeah, you know what? Um, Charlie and Ryan are going to be together forever on this planet here. People, some people would lose their minds, leave the church and they would lose and they would storm out. And he would be like, you're walking away, but you know what I had prepared for you? I had a eternal glory pre prepared for you, but fine. Your <laughs> ego got the hold of it. You know, we, we really have to be willing to trust God over, over, you know, um, our own understanding sometimes, especially our understandings of things that we don't have answers for. So, you know, uh, you just gotta, you just gotta really, you know, like if you know the Lord, you know, he's going to make it all work and we're going to be uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah. If you don't know him, then it's all going to freak you out. But you just have to cultivate that relationship and ask for you know him to be closer to you. Because like I said, we're entering a really bizarre age and we're going to have to be close to Jesus Christ. Um, I even think the church is going to start saying Yeshua soon. I think we're going to start saying Yeshua. I really do. You think so? Yeah. I well, really that do. is his name, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's the correct, like, what is that? Is that Aramaic? Or is that? Aramaic. Uh, it's Aramaic. Yeah, Aramaic, I mean. And, yeah. and then he, here's another one. We say God. What did Jesus say? Yeah. He um, said Adonai, but the other word he said. Adonai. Uh, well, uh, Abba. Um, so there's Adonai, there's Abba. There's Elohim. But, there's, but the Aramaic word for. Um, uh, oh, don't tell me. Hold on. Uh, there's. Uh, what? Not Jehovah. He's Jehovah. But. Uh, I'm going to make sure I pronounce this correctly. What's it start with? Um, what's it start it with? with? Um, it starts with an A. Adonai. Well, it actually starts with E. It's Elah. Elah. Elah is, is Aramaic. Oh, okay. For, for Which God, almost sounds like Aramaic. Allah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like. Don't become a Muslim, uh, Quaker. I'm, 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 not, I'm not. I'm not interested. I'm not going to. Um, I won't talk to you again. But, <laughs> but you know. Um, but but you look you, you think well they, they obviously have some truth there you know you'll be on ward radio you know how you're always on your phone the the camera will go over to you you'll be praying over there <laughs> five times a... <laughs> well you look at you look at Islam and you see they have a lot more truth because they're actually calling God by the same the same name that Jesus did you know yeah. God the word God is German it's it's not it's only a couple hundred years old you know it's not even Jesus never said the word God right so right, it's like right. So we get. I, I'm I'm happy if, if some things do change, and if if you're not happy about that, then you got to ask: Is your faith in the tradition, or is it in the eternal? And um, if it's in the eternal, you're going to be okay. And if it's in the tradition, then you won't. It's all right. Thank you so um, much, Kwaku. God bless you. Will you will you reappear like maybe once every three months? Sure. Yeah, I'll come. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get a lot of. Comments Would you be a reoccurring that. guest? I, I I know you're not that much, but. The, at first, I was like, "Does Quaku have some contract with Carden or something?" Um, yeah. All right, thank you so much, brother. Hey, thanks, Ben. We'll see ya.